Hey folks, welcome back to the Monkey Shine Lab. And um, this time we've got a little bit of a split subject for you. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, uh, something that I reread recently. Um, the original Dark Knight Returns. Um, this is a, um, a critical, critical piece of graphic literature from Frank Miller. Excuse me. Uh, I wanted to talk about Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns as a piece of graphic literature. Um, and, uh, <laughs> well, here's a quote on the back. It says, probably the finest piece of comic art ever to be published in a popular edition. Um, which is probably true. Um, as you... As you look at this, the artwork and the interpretation, um, it may seem rough to some folks who have come into comics since the uh, 2000s and stuff, been around for the last 20 years. Um, the, 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 the paper has improved. The writing overall has definitely improved. The, the artwork is clearly advanced but back in 1986 this was an interpretation of dc superheroes which really wasn't um you know i mean this was not a the market it is now at all um so when you saw this whole thing come out um you know, this was this was a lot of brave storytelling, and it probably single-handedly kind of restarted, um, along with the Watchmen, of course. But it, I mean, it restarted um, interest in graphic storytelling, which had really fallen off. I mean, there was there was a big fall off of geek culture that happened in the in the mid 80s and um the video game crash and and all that other stuff so when this came through it was it was a really a genuine breath of fresh air and it it's it's pretty much the reason why we have all of the all of the resurgence that we do these days but this was out in 1986, and I think I read it. I'm trying to remember if I read it in the 80s, or if I had finally picked up a copy by about 1990 or so, and read it. Um, but uh, I had not owned a copy of it until recently, so I reread it, and. Um, in doing that too, um, I, I had ended up picking up the, the mutant leader here, which is one of the main characters from about 50% to 70% of the, <laughs> of the story of, uh, Dark Knight Returns. Um, and so I figured since I had gotten the mutant leader and since they weren't very expensive, um... I, uh, I saw that they had a decent copy of the armored Batman finally come out from the good people at McFarland. So this was um, this was a definite pickup when I saw it for cheap enough. And as things go these days, it was cheap enough finally, very quickly actually, um, surprisingly so. <laughs> But anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break Batman out of his box and um, put him up with the mutant leader. Um, if you have not read uh, Batman: The Dark Knight Returns, I, it's it is sort of a nerd rite of passage. It's one of those things that you should have to read before they give you your decoder ring for being in our club. Um, but, you know, with the, 
with the advent of live movies, of course, and everything, what you, what some of you may have seen is this outfit and this scene and some about, oh, a seventh of the book weighed out in um, Batman versus Superman, uh, Dawn of Justice. Batman vs. Superman, incredibly long name. Um, comes the little collector card, so you should definitely take that out. And of course, the McFarland Standard DC Imprinted Action Stand, which a character this size probably does not need. Um, so, we'll break all that down. Um, here's the aforementioned tray shot with uh, two extra hands. Although, you know, I mean, they don't, okay. These are these are fist hands that are in there right now. <laughs> Have a, a very um, expressive head. He can tilt it from side to side. And, I'm going to have him strangling him. So anyway, there it is, a mini review of the figures involved. If you didn't know where these various figures were actually from, this is not from the movie, this is not from, it's from the graphic novel. And if you haven't read the graphic novel, it's something that you've really got to get around to. This is a very serious piece of nerd history. It was revived an industry, it revived people's interest in superheroes, and it showed the world really a new way of looking at uh, comic storytelling. It didn't, you know, I didn't show the world that. I guess it showed the United States that. Um, and uh, we soaked it up. This was a super important book to me. And um, so I just wanted to get it out of the mothballs, read it again, and kind of share it with you all. If you are a younger uh, viewer, you should you know, head on out to the library. You can find all these books, a lot of these, and especially ones that are like this, where it was a big deal. You can find a lot of these things at the library. You don't have to buy them, um, but you can also pick them up pretty easily and cheaply online. Look at used copies and stuff like that. They usually come in pretty good condition because they were pre-owned by people like me. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's it uh, from, you know, a Batman super fan, uh, The Dark Knight Returns book and toys. Pretty cool. Learn your history of where your figures come from. Anyway, thanks for coming out to the Monkey Shine Lab. If you like what you see, please remember to like, share and subscribe uh, and check out some of the other First 117 Network shows. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later. Bye.